Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production. Recently, somebody asked me about the mod features. Uh, I did a video on these and they're asking me about the mini reset and retrigger function. So I thought I'd go over that today. So let's do this inside in Sound Factory, but this can actually be done in almost all Melda plugins, at least all the ones with the mods in there. Uh, this one is just the easiest because it already has MIDI going through it since it's a synth, but you can do it with almost any other mid, uh, Melda plugin. So here we go. I have a just basic synth lead sound here. I should turn that up a little bit, but uh, that's just a really basic sound. And I'm gonna have it legato just because I think it'll be easier to demonstrate some things with that. The first thing we wanna do is actually hook up something to the mod. We'll use the frequency here. Clear and learn, just move this up and down like this here. Turn off recording and we'll just click here to turn it on. Now, if we look at it, we see this moving. And by default, it goes to an LFO shape. So just like this, we can change the values to go up and down as we want. I think before I showed you how to use these different range modes. And there's other things here you can do like step if you want. Uh, we don't need that. For this, let's just stick to the normal LFO with a sine wave shape. We have our rate and everything down here. But what I really wanna do is go into this MIDI reset retrigger. So let's just expand this so it's a little bit bigger and enable it. And you think, okay, what is all this doing? So the first one, the MIDI reset is just on note on. This means whenever I hit a new note, it's going to start back at the beginning. So I have the phase at zero. You see, it's always starting there. If I don't want it to start there, I can have it start someplace around here, like 90. So I just set the phase here at 90 like this. Now watch where it starts. Now I can do the same thing if I want to start here, just set it to 180, etc. Like that. So that's the easiest one. Uh, I think I can turn it off and it'll just free run basically. So if I turn that all off, it's not restarting at all. Now I can do the same thing instead of note on, I can do note off. So it'll restart at zero as soon as I turn, uh, or actually I release the note. So hopefully you can see this little scroll marker going by. So you can choose either one of those to happen. I'm not sure, can you use both of them at the same time? Maybe you can. So you can't have both of them on at the same time. So when you turn the note on and when you release the note, it'll start back at zero, if you want that. I don't know if that's really useful. Uh, you can also have this note on first. You might think like, what is note on first? This means if I'm playing something legato, the first note I hit is going to start back at this zero degrees here, right at the beginning. But the subsequent notes won't restart it until I release uh, some of the notes. Okay, maybe I need to turn this note on, sorry. So you see, if I'm playing legato, it starts back at the beginning, but if I play something uh, with some space in between it, I release the note, then it's going to restart. So that's what that does. Uh, I think this one, almost the same thing, note off last, so it's gonna be pretty much the same thing. If I play legato, the last one, it's gonna go off. And I believe single shot reset is just going to uh, have every single time I hit it, just restart. So you can experiment with those. I believe it actually explains some of them in here, note on, note off, note off first, etc. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what it's doing here. Uh, next one is the channel. So I have this going through all channels, but let's say you might want to have your notes on MIDI channel one, and then on MIDI channel two, you can control the modulator. So I could have different MIDI notes coming on channel two that would control this mod, mod one, and all the notes that I'm actually playing 
would be controlled by this one, channel one. So that's the way you can do it. I usually wouldn't do that, but if you really want lots of control over it, that's a kind of cool thing you can do. And I think it's especially good if you're using a plugin. I'm using M Sound Factory here, but if I had something like M Wobbler or something afterwards, I might want to set it to channel two or channel three, just so the notes that I'm inputting through MIDI aren't causing M Sound Factory to start playing notes because I don't want those notes playing. I just want to trigger this modulator. So that's what that's there for. I already showed you the phase. Uh, this one, oh, the minimum mo note and the maximum note. So what this will do is it will, let's say, restart it just like it is now. Right now it's at the lowest setting and the highest setting, so every single note's going to restart. But let's say if I move this up, look at how high this is, let's try here, C3. So when I play C, D, E, F going ascending from this C note, it's restarting. You see the restart. But let's if I play below this, like C restarts, B. The notes that are lower than C aren't restarting. And it would be the opposite here. So if I could turn down the minimum here. And now notes above this C, C3, don't trigger it. So you can do that if you only want notes in a certain range, you can move this down, move this up. That way you can get whatever range you want to trigger the restart on note on, note off, etc. cetera. Uh, the other one is velocity. So what this will do is basically uh, above a certain velocity, it will be triggered and below it, it won't. So let me see if I can do this. <laughs> I'm trying to play fairly lightly, and you see it's not triggering. The oscillator is just running freely. If I play harder, even if I'm playing legato, it's still restarting. So that's how you can play with the minimum and maximum velocity to kind of achieve what you want. Basically, these modulators are generally free running, but if you don't want them to be free running and you want them to restart uh, for certain things, use this MIDI reset or re-trigger, and this will have it reset. But like I said, it doesn't have to be on every single note. You can have it on the notes on, the releases, you can have note on from first, so you can play legato, etc. And you can also do the same thing with the minimum and maximum velocity. So I think this is a really cool thing you can do with the LFO here. And besides that, I'm sure I've showed you before, there's all sorts of interesting things you can do with this. Like you have step sequencers in here, you have these basic shapes, but you can also import your own shapes in here by loading a sample. And you can even go in here and you can draw your own weird custom shape like this if that's what you want to do. So there's lots of different possibilities here and that's not even counting things like the envelope and things like that. And this also has a bunch of settings in here you can play with too. So hopefully that gave you an idea of what you can do with the modulators and showed you what the mini reset and retrigger does. If you have any questions, leave those down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this and be sure to check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.